time back. Up to now, we talked about physical objects, photons or others, as if they were individual entities. In this lecture, we recognize that particles with identical properties are fundamentally indistinguishable, and this has consequences. There is one aspect that we haven't talked about, and that is that on the quantum level, the entities, the particles, electrons, photons, and so forth, they are indistinguishable, which means that if I have two photons which have the same properties, so they have, say, the same polarization and, and the same uh, color, and they arrive at the same time and so forth, I will not be able to distinguish between them. They will look exactly the same to me, and I will not be able to make a difference between them. So let's, let's talk about the situation where this is important. So here I have a picture of a photon arriving, impinging on a half-transparent mirror, and then the photon can be transmitted or it can be reflected. And let's just, let's just describe this in a simple way. So we use a column, one zero, for the arriving photon. And so the top entry means that the, the top entry is for moving to the right, and the bottom entry will be for moving downwards. And so as, as this photon arrives, and then uh, when it leaves, then it has a probability of a half to be transmitted, continuous moving to the right, and a probability of a half of moving downwards. And so since these probabilities are square probability amplitudes, the amplitudes are one of a square root of two. Now, on, a photon could also be arriving in the downward direction, so it enters from here, and then this photon, as it arrives, would be described by a column of zero one, one just moving downwards. And as it emerges, again, it will have equal probability of transmission and reflection, but now transmission means moving downwards, and reflection means moving uh, to the right, moving horizontally. And, and we need a minus sign for one of these two probability amplitudes, because on the arriving side, we have two columns which are orthogonal, and having a unitary process happening here, we will also need orthogonal columns on the departing side of, of this mirror process. So this is why we need a minus sign in one place. But other than that, this just says that there is a 50% probability of being transmitted and reflected. And just for later reference, let me note that, that for these photons that move to the right, this is for transmission, and this amplitude is for reflection. And for the photons that move downwards when they arrive, Transmission means that they continue to move downwards, and reflection is when they move to the right after encountering the half transparent mirror. So here we have the situation with a photon that is arriving on the left and moves to the right, and a photon that comes from the top and moves to the bottom, and, and in both cases the photon can be transmitted or reflected. But now let's imagine the situation that we have two photons arriving at the mirror at the same time. So I now have the mirror, and I have one photon that arrives from the left, and one photon that arrives from the top. And let's just imagine that these photons do not have any properties that distinguish them. So in particular, they have the same color, they have the same polarization, and they also arrive at the mirror at the same time. So it's not that there's an early photon and a late photon. No, they arrive at the same time. Now they can be reflected or transmitted. But there's one, one possible situation is that we have both photons traveling to the right at the end. And so one of the photons is transmitted, this one and this photon is reflected. So we can say, well, one of the photons was transmitted, one of the photons was reflected, and, and the overall amplitude for this process 
<laughs> we should just obtain that by multiplying the amplitudes for the individual processes. So photon is arriving from the left and, and is transmitted. So we, we have an amplitude of one over square root of two for that. And the photon is arriving from the top and is reflected. So we have an amplitude of minus one over two. And so we multiply this, we get minus a half. And uh, if we would follow the usual procedures, then this, the square of this amplitude would give us the probability. Now, another situation is photons arriving wrong, one from the left and one from the top. And now both emerge at the bottom. So here we have, again, one photon reflected and one photon transmitted. And following the same logic, we look at the reflection amplitude and the transmission amplitude. And the product is one half, and so it's the, the same product as here. So these two processes will happen with the same probability. Finally, we could have one photon got emerging to the right and one photon emerging to the bottom. So we have photons coming in, one from, from the left and one from the top. And why not getting one coming out here and one coming out there? But now remember, this could mean that both have been transmitted or both have been reflected. So we could have transmission twice or reflection twice. And this is where the indistinguishability of the photons come in. If these photons are identical in all their properties, then by looking at the photons that come out, we cannot tell in any way whatsoever whether both photons were transmitted or both photons were reflected. Then, according to the rules, we have to add the probability amplitudes for the two processes that we cannot tell apart. So if we have transmission twice, that would be 1 over square root 2 and 1 over square root 2 for this amplitude. And for the amplitude for reflection twice, we would have 1 over square root 2 and negative 1 over square root 2. So transmission, transmission, two positive signs, reflection, reflection, one positive, one negative sign. But then this gives a half and this gives negative a half and the sum is zero. And, and that means that the probability for this process is, is a zero. This process does not happen. What can happen is this process or this process. So, and if we do this experiment, we will always observe two photons coming out either on the right or at the bottom. We will never observe one photon coming out on the right and another photon coming out at the bottom. And I repeat that this is a consequence of the fact that these photons are completely indistinguishable. We cannot say whether both photons were transmitted or both photons were reflected. Now what I'm describing here is a manifestation of the fundamental indistinguishability of the photons. I repeat, we cannot tell the photons apart. They are identical in all properties. We don't know which photon is which. And this, this is an important uh, experimental fact and that also has uh, applications for quantum information processing. It was first observed by Hong, O, and Mandel in 1987. So what's, what's the use of such a thing? Well, first of all, as Hong Ong Mandel did, you can change, make slight changes to the experiment that 
that introduce a distinguishability between the photons. So what they, for example, did is that they, they slightly changed the arriving times. So by having one photon delayed a little bit, and then the photons would no longer arrive at the half-transparent mirror at the same time. And so we can uh, distinguish them by their arrival times. If I know that this photon is early and this photon is late, then for the two photons coming out here, I can now tell which one came from which side. So I can tell whether both were transmitted or both were reflected. And so these, these processes now become distinguishable. And then we have a, uh, an amplitude of a half for each of them. And, and uh, so then all the four processes uh, will happen with, with the same probability. And, and so, so even slight delays between the arriving photons can be distinguished. And in the Hongo Mandel experiment, they, they could distinguish uh, arrival times that uh, differ by a picosecond or less. So it's, it's the enormously precise timing that is, is uh, necessary to see this, this extinction of these probabilities. I am emphasizing the indistinguishability of the photons. Now, if the photons are distinguishable in the Hongo Mandel situation by arriving uh, at different times, but suppose they could arrive at the same times but have different polarizations. So, say if this if this arriving photon on this side was a, a vertically polarized polarized, and this one is horizontally polarized, then I can tell if I see a vertical pole polarized photon coming out here and a horizontally polarized photon coming out here, I can tell that both were transmitted. But if I see a horizontally polarized photon coming out here and a vertically, vertically polarized photon coming out here, then I can tell that both were reflected. So again, both transmitted or both reflected are distinguishable processes and, and therefore I have to look at them separately and get a probability for one and a probability, probability for the other. And, and, and uh, I have four different um, cases that, that are possible. So, indistinguishability is important. It's important for photons in situations like this, but it's also important in other contexts. So, so for example, Electrons are all the same, so we cannot distinguish two electrons. They, they are uh, indistinguishable particles, and that has all kinds of consequences in atomic physics, in chemistry, for the stability of matter, and so forth. So, so this is not a nuisance. It's not something that we should be annoyed with. It is, it is an enrichment of the physics that comes about because, fundamentally, uh, elementary objects are, are so simple that we cannot tell them apart. They are fundamentally indistinguishable. So this lack of distinguishability is not a lack in our skills. It's not that we have to wait, I mean, maybe a future generation of physicists are more skillful and they can distinguish them. No. Experiments like those by Hong or Mandel confirm that the indistinguishability of the photons and also of other entities, is fundamental. In summary, the fundamental indistinguishability of identical particles, such as photons, has important consequences. One of them is the Hongo-Mandel effect.